Hello viewers, for DIYers, you're back in the tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration how to read an imperial micrometer. Now this particular micrometer I am using here is a vernier micrometer. Now the basic difference between a standard micrometer and a vernier micrometer is that the standard one has an accuracy to one thousandths of an inch and a vernier micrometer has an accuracy of ten thousandths of an inch. Now they're both basically the exact same now, the way they are read, but the vernier micrometer does have an extra step where it does allow you to go to that extra digit uh, for accuracy. Now, just to name off the parts of the micrometer, first of all, we start with here is known as the anvil. This is one of our measuring surfaces. Now, the next measuring surface, which we also use, it does move back and forth, is the spindle. Now, this portion here is known as the frame. Then this little rotatable piece here is known as the lock. Now what this does is lock the spindle in place in order to take a measurement. Now you will notice different locks on different types of micrometers. Now this de does depend on your model. Sometimes you will have one up here which is just a little screw that you turn in and out or you will have just a little lever that you basically have just a quarter turn on that does also lock it in place. Now next the stationary portion here is known as the sleeve. Now moving along here which does rotate with the spindle as well is the thimble and on the back side here is a little ratchet now this does here is basically controls the amount of tension that is applied to a piece just to ensure that you do have the equal amount of tension throughout measuring items and that ensures that you do have the accuracy on that now as you can see on this micrometer here we do have a scale that wraps around the sleeve here now this is known as the vernier here hence the name vernier micrometer now on a standard micrometer you won't have this scale Therefore, you don't get that extra digit here. Now, with this scale here, you're able to achieve that fourth digit or that accuracy to ten thousandths of an inch. Now, when you first use your micrometer here, you always want to make sure the lock is turned off here. Now, this will depend on what type of model you have as to how to turn the lock off. But this ensures that the thimble does move back and forth nice and freely and it doesn't bind up. And that will also affect how the ratchet works as well because it does put drag on this and therefore that could affect the accuracy when you are measuring a part. Now before every time what you also want to make sure is the face of the anvil here and the face of the spindle here which these are your measuring surfaces. You want to make sure they're always clean because again that could affect the accuracy as well. Now you can just go ahead and use a little bit of degreaser or even just a piece of paper just to clean off any buildup that's on there. Now anytime we do use the micrometer we always want to make sure it is zero as you can see this one here is zero when I do close it up and just to show you how the ratchet works here you can see that does apply equal pressure every time this does close up or close against a part and you can see here we do have a good accuracy now as for how the measuring system works in a micrometer here you will find different sizes of micrometers available now with this particular one I am using here it does go from zero to one inch uh, no larger than one inch you will find other models that will go from one inch to two inches so therefore it doesn't measure anything under one inch and three inches to four inches and so on now this will depend on which one you have now as you can see on the sleeve here we do have some numbers that go across the top here and we also have numbers that go around the uh, diameter of the thimble as well now for these numbers here basically when we do have it fully closed up you will notice that the we do have a zero mark here and we also have a zero mark on the thimble as well here as you can see so basically how this works here is you can see with the zero mark here when this is lined up all the way here and you can see it's lined up on that line there as well as the edge of the thimble is lined up on the zero mark it is closed and we have basically zero inches now when we do open it up slightly we'll see we have the numbers here across the top now what this does is give us our first decimal place or the one hundred thousandths decimal place now next moving on as you can see we do have three lines in between here or any of those larger numbers now sometimes these will vary depending on what model of micrometer you do have sometimes you will find that the center one is larger than the other two on the outside now basically what this is here is this gives us our twenty five thousandths measurement here so the first one we'll have is uh, when we go 0 0.025 next one will be 0 0.050 and the next one will be 0 0.075 and then once we move up to the one here we'll have 0 0.100 now as for the thimble here basically how this works is this determines the measurement in between that 
0 0.025, 0 0.050, and 0 0.075. Now, this full rotation here, when we do rotate the thimble here, you will notice when we start from zero, when we rotate it all the way outward, we have 5, then 10, 15, 20, and again 25, which goes us goes to the next corresponding line in between the 100 thousandths marks. Now just to give you an example of how this thimble measurement works here, basically, just to show you the reading here, we can see we've gone past the 0.5 mark already. So going with these smaller corresponding lines here, what we'll have here is 0 0.025, then we've gone past the 0 0.05, and we've also gone past the 0 0.075. Now, basically here, what we want to do is whatever the number is on the thimble here, as you can see, we have a 10, and we've already gone past a 7.5 line here. We'll have, uh, just doing a little math here, we want to add those two together, we'll have 8.5. So basically, we'll be left with a total measurement of 0.585 thousandths of an inch. Now, this is for a standard micrometer reading. Now, if you do have the vernier micrometer, then you do have to go with an extra step, which I'll just show you in a second on how to do. Now, when going with the extra step for the vernier micrometer here, as you can see, we do have a scale that's located around the sleeve here. And what this is, is basically the vernier. And as you can see, these lines have the possibility of lining up with the lines on the thimble as well. Now, what we want to do here is we want to determine which line lines up perfectly with the uh, ones on the sleeve itself here and basically that'll give us our final fourth digit of our decimal place here. Now with the even number that I did show you earlier here which was 0.585 we won't have anything that actually lines up because it was a fairly accurate number but if we do find that it is off on this portion here then you will find the other extra digit here. So with the measurement of the standard micrometer here we basically have a reading of 0 0.585 now as for the extra step with the vernier micrometer instead we would have a reading of 0 0.5850 0 because the corresponding line on the vernier scale did line up with the zero now as for a full-on example here of when you're measuring a part now basically when you stick the part in here as you can see i just have a nut for an example there you want to make sure the part is clean as well as the jaws are clean and when you do move the jaws back and forth you want to ensure your lock is off to ensure that everything does move freely and when you do turn the ratchet here as you can see everything does move smoothly and won't affect the accuracy here so once you're satisfied of where you have the measurement at you can go ahead and lock it into place and so taking our reading here first of all what we'll start with here as you can see we are working with a, a zero to one inch micrometer here so obviously the reading here will be under one inch so we'll have zero point and the first corresponding line which we did pass here of the larger measurement is three so zero point three next what we look at here is whether or not we've passed a line here on the edge of the thimble here and we have passed the first line here the 25 line so therefore we will take the measurement off here and we'll have to uh, add those together so we can see here it's gone from 0, 1, 2, hasn't passed 3 yet. So we'll take the number 2 here, so 2 plus 25 equals 27. So if you are using a standard micrometer, we'll have a measurement of 0.327. Now if we are using a vernier micrometer, I'll show you the extra step again. So again, the extra step with the vernier micrometer so you can see here we do have the scale on the back side here which is the vernier and we do have these corresponding lines that go along here and we also have the lines here on the thimble itself so what we want to determine is which ones do line up the best here so you can see we do go all the way around here and none of the ones line up very well here we got the five the six does get fairly close to lining up here um, depends on the angle here i'm not sure if it shows well on the camera here but in person the six doesn't quite line up and you can see the 7 doesn't line up well. Now if we go past the 7 here, we can see the 8 doesn't line up very well. And the 9 starts to get worse, and so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll take that 7 there, and which that gives us a final reading of 0 0.3277. That gives us our fourth decimal place. So if you are using a standard micrometer here, basically what we're left with the reading of here is 0 0.327, thousandths of an inch. Now... Again, if we are using the vernier micrometer, which does give us the fourth digit here, 
we are left with 0 0.3277 ten thousandths of an inch. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.